I'm Chris Neresco and I'll be discussing about the history of English literature. So, before anything else, let me read our objectives. So, at the end of the discussion, 85% of the students with 100% level of proficiency shall be able to first interpret the chron chronological timeline of the history of English literature from Old English period to postmodern period. Second, analyze the important facts that influence the development of English literature. And lastly, differentiate the major literary features from different eras. So I made an English literature timeline to help you visualize the sequence how the English literature unfold in the history. So first, we have the Old English period or the Anglo-Saxon period during 450 to 1066 and 1066 to 1500, we have the Middle English period. Then the Renaissance period during the 1500s to 1660, followed by the Neoclassical period during 1660 to 1785. However, from 1798 to 1832, we have the Romantic period, and uh, from 1832 to 1901, we have the Victorian period. And then from 1901 to 1939, the modern period. Lastly, 1939 to the present time, we have the postmodern period. Okay, so English literature is divided into three periods. So I have divided it to enable for us to easily grasp the information that I will be sharing with all of you so we have the old english period the middle english period and the modern period so let's begin with the old english period so old english period is also known as the anglo-saxon period why because this age is started in the fifth century when the jutes anglos and saxons came to England from Germany, defeated the English tribe, and started their reign. So it ended in 1066 with the Norman conquest. So what are the important facts that influenced the literature in this period? So here are the following. First, Christianization of the pagan tribes began in England during this period. And in the 7th century, Christian authorities established monasteries where written literature began. Whatever had existed as literature before that time was oral. Therefore, before 7th, 7th century, literature was recited orally. So, um, next, Alfred the Great, who reigned over England from 871 to 901, encouraged education and supervise the compilation of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. Okay, so what are the major literary works during this time? So first we have the Bear Wolf. So it is, it is spelled as Bew Wolf, but it is pronounced as Bear Wolf, like a bear, like an animal, bear and a wolf so that's the right pronunciation again bear wolf so the, one of the major literary works during this time is the bear wolf so it is the earliest epic in english so it is an old english poem which is consists of 3182 alliterative lines so this is one of the most important and most often translated works of old english literature Next, second, we also have The Wanderer. So what is The Wanderer? So Wanderer is an old English poem preserved only in an anthology known as the Exeter Book, a manuscript dating from the late 10th century. So it counts 115 lines of alliterative verse. So as, it, as is often 
the case in Anglo-Saxon verse. So the composer and compiler are anonymous and within the manuscript, the poem is entitled. Next, what are the main literary features features during this time? So we have her first. During this time, most of the liter literary works are anonymous because they are. The, it is very hard to trace them because of the cir circumstance. Yes, and the second one is the paganism. So paganism dominates the literary spirit of the time. Through Christianity, is all also traceable. And then, during this time, a strong belief belief in faith is re reflected. Since Christianity is widespread, that's why. So, next also, evil is symbolized by monster. And romantic love is absent. So, usually during this time, and their literary works, um, romantic love as a theme and a literary work is um not that um it is not used often so next the attitude to women is women is respectful and sea adventures savagery and heroic activities are honored and use of more metaphors and less similes in the practice of the time so what are the metaphors that is the direct usage of uh, direct comparing two things directly like you look like a lion like that or you're a lion no 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 pardon pardon you're a lion that's metaphor but when you say simile you look like a lion right so it's like if you can get my point so simile is the use is you're using the word like or us to compare two things while metaphor you're di directly um let's say for example you're di directly comparing a person to an animal to an animal like you're a lion but if you compare a person to a thing it is called personification okay next alliteration is used during this time alliteration is used as chief ornamental device and all alliterative syllables are stressed next another thing canning so during this time cannings is also wildly used so what is cannings cannings is the usage of is compound pertains to compound words so instead of using single words instead of sing, using single plain words they use authors during this time use compound words let here are the following examples whale road instead of saying sea loaf giver instead of um um writing sea a king rather and life house which means body, soul destroyer, which means monster. And then verse lines don't have equal number of syllables. So syllables. So syllables in one line vary from 6 to 14 and end rhyme is ignored during this time, meaning to say they are more focused on the content and not on the structure of the poem. So it's like a free writing style. So they're using free verses. That's why end rhyme is ignored. So it's not given that much importance. Next, let's proceed to the Middle English period. During the Middle English period, so this period started from the Norman conquest in 1066, the end of the Old English period, and ended at the close of the 15th century, or also called us, the Middle Ages. So the Anglo-Norman, so it, this period is divided into two sub-periods, namely the Anglo-Norman period from 1066 to, 10, to 1340 and age of Chaucer from 1340 to 1400. So uh, 
during the Anglo-Norman period, literature during this time is mainly in Anglo-Norman, so the, the French dialect spoken by the new ruling class of England. In the age of Chaucer, Geoffrey Chaucer, the great poet, dominated this period. So this period, the name of this period was derived on this great poet named, named Jeff, Geoffrey Chaucer. Okay. So what are the what are the important facts that influence the literature of this period? So first the English Parliament was established in 1295. So crusade, the religious battle between 11th and 13th, 13th century. So and another thing, the Magna Carta, the Great Charter which limited the power of the monarchs was passed on 15th of June 1215. And also in 1362 English was declared to be the language of law and courts. And next, the feudal system. During also this time, the feudal system, which had been very strong earlier, collapsed after the Black Death, a plague in 1348 to 1349. And in the 19th, in the 14th century, reformation of English church begun under the leadership of Wycliffe. So... Another thing, William Caxton established, established printing press in 1476. Okay, also Renaissance began with the fall of the Constantinople in 1453. So Muhammad II, the Sultan of Ottoman Turks and a crusader, defeated the Christians in 1453 and occupied Constantinople. The the capital of Byzantine, Byzantine Empire and the center of classical learning. So after the defeat, the Christian scholars fled to different parts of Europe where they spread their knowledge. So thus, ancient learning started reviving. So this revival of the classical knowledge is called Renaissance. So its features are curiosity about the unknown, Patriotism, desire for unlimited wealth and power, love of adventures, admiration for beauty, care for humanism, and fondness of the past. And also, Columbus discovered America in 1492 and Vasco da Gama reached India in 1498. Lastly, during this period, Copernicus from um, 1473 to 1543 proved that the sun is the center of all the planets in the solar system. Excuse me. Okay, so during this period, why is it important for us to know those facts? Those facts that I have mentioned. It is because those happenings or events during that time influ greatly influence how the literature that time was written. That's why it's very important to consider those factors, those historical events that we have um, mentioned earlier, enable for us to have a deeper under understanding how these major writers and their ma how, how these major writers have come up with their major works. So let's say for example, the um the bible that was written by john wycliffe in 1324 to 1384 so he's called the father of english prose so again who is the father of english prose john wycliffe so he is the father of english prose so the bible he translated the Vi the bible into english from Latin. Another thing, John, the Confessio Amantis of John Gower, from eighteen, from rather from thirteen twenty five to fourteen o eight. So, what is the Confessio Amantis? So, Confessio Amantis is a thirty three thousand 
Imagine 33,000 line Middle English poem which uses the confession made by an aging lover to the chaplain of Venice as a frame story for a collection of shorter narrative poems. So according to its prologue, it was composed at the request of Richard II. Next, from Geoffrey Chaucer, from 1325 to 1400s, so Troilus and Crusade in 1387. So this is an epic poem by. This is an epic poem which retells in Middle English the tragic story of the lovers Troilus and Crusade, set against a backdrop of war during the siege of. Troy. So it was composed using rhyme royale and probably completed during the mid 1380s. And um, another one from Chaucer is the con is the famous and widely known Canterbury Tales. So Canterbury Tales from 1385 to 1400 so this is a collection of 24 stories that runs to over 17,000 lines written in middle english between 1387 to 1400s so in 1386 chaucer became controller of customs and justice of peace and and in 1389 he became the clerk of the king's work Next, another major author during this time. We have William Langland from 1332 to 1386. His major work is entitled Pierce Plowman in 1362, or Visual Wilhelmi de Petro Plowman is a Middle English allegorical narrative poem that is written in unrhymed alliterative verse divided into sections called passes. Next, still from the Middle English period, we have Sir Thomas Mallory. So he wrote The More to the Arthur in 1485, the first romance in prose in 15th century of 15th century of tales about so this is a tale this is a tale about the legendary King Arthur, Jennifer Lancelot, Merlin and the knights of the round tale a round table rather along with their respective buckler so during the middle English period here are the main literary features so what are the literary features what are the features of literature during this era? So first, poetry serves as the main genre. So a lot of authors during the time love to write poems. And uh, prose in English gets a strong foundation. And then the English languages, which is a considerable standard through all spelling, continues. And drama began in the form of mystery play, morality play, and interlude. So the writers of the age are influenced by Dante, Dante Alighieri, and Percharge, and Boccaccio. Also during this time, love, chivalry, and religion are the three main literary subjects that are widely used by the writers during this time so also the spirit of romance dominates the age and then the use of pentameter or the ten syllables in each lines begins in this time and the end rhyme is introduced so during the old english period remember right they are not uh, the, the use of end rhyme is ignored so during this time while during the Middle English period, the use of end rhyme is starting to be used by these authors. So, 
stressed alliteration also stressed alliteration is discarded and humor irony irony and satire are brought into practice so through through renaissance began though renaissance began in 1453 its effect on english life and literature was felt after 1500s so for this reason it's generally accepted that the renaissance period began with the beginning of the 16th century and continued till the restoration in 1660 so this period is called the renaissance period because renaissance period was the main driving force that characterized the literature of this time so this period of 160 years is subdivided into four short shorter ages after the names of the political rules so here are the four ages first elizabeth age from 1550 to 8 to 1603 and jacobian age from 1603 to 1625 and then followed by caroline age in 1625 to 1649 and lastly the commonwealth period starting from 1649 to 1660 so let's first have elizabeth h so elizabeth h started in 1558 to 1603 so queen elizabeth elizabeth the first reigned over england from 1558 to 1603 so this is called the golden age of english literature so what are the impor- important facts that influenced the, lit- the literature of this period so first with the accession of queen elizabeth the first dynastic problems and political troubles came to an end religious and social stability brought about national prosperity and during this time the religious refor- reformation inspired religious tolerance and secularism and Elizabeth the first introduced anglicanism to settle religious problems in the 16th century Martin Luther of Germany and Zwingli Zwingli and Calvin of Switzerland protested against the autocracy of the pope those who supported them were called protestants and those who still supported the pope were called the papist or catholics So Henry the 8th who was the king of England during those years supported Protestantism for his personal advantage. He wanted to divorce his first wife Catherine and marry Anne Boleyn his fiance but the pope didn't approve it. So he denied pope pope's authority, married Anne Boleyn and introduced Protestantism to England. Some of the people accepted king's religious authority, but the rest followed the pope's rule. So this caused a bloody civil war which continued till 1558, the year Queen Elizabeth I came to power. So she understood the problem and introduced Anglicanism, England's own church. So this religious settlement brought stability and prosperity to England in the second half of the 16th century century so renaissance that had started earlier was now a very now very strongly felt in england so it brought ancient greek and roman wisdom to england erasmus reached england with the with john collet thought thought humanism and other ideals of renaissance So the social life of England was marked with a strong national spirit, humanism, liberal religious views, scientific curiosity, social content, intellectual progress, and unlimited enthusiasm. So, who are the major writers and what are their works during the Renaissance period? So, first we have 
The Utopia, written by Thomas More. So, from 17, from 1478 to 1535. So, Utopia or Kingdom of Nowhere. So, this book was originally written in Latin in 1516. What is Utopia? So, it is it is an imagined community or society that possesses highly desirable or nearly perfect qualities for its citizens. So, the term was coined by, by Moore, by Sir Thomas Moore, for his 1516 book, which is the Utopia, describing describing a fictional island, society, and the South Atlantic Ocean off the coast of South America. So the opposite of a utopia is dystopia, which dominates the fictional liter literature. Another one? Oh, another major writer is... Um, Norton and Sackville. So Norton from 1532 to 1584 and Sackville from 1536 to 1608. So they, they, they are the co-authors co of the first English tragedy which is, which is written in 1562. The Garbodoc. So what is the Garbodoc? So Garbodoc is a direct imitation of Seneca, a, f a famous famous as the first tragedy in English on classical lines. So was the Garbodoc or Ferex and Porex of Thomas Norton and Thomas Sackville acted in 1562. So Garbodoc gave an immediate and lasting vogue for tragedy and high comedy. Edmund Spencer, 1552 to 1599. So he is called the poet of poets because many later followed his art of poetry. So who is the poet of poets? Edmund Spencer. So he wrote The Fairy Queen in 1590 and The Shepherd's Calendar in 1579. So what is the Fairy Queen? So the Fairy Queen is an England is an English epic poem. It is consists of books one to three and uh, was published in the year 15, 1590, then republished in 1596 together with books four and six. So in other words, it is composed of six books. Okay, this next is the Shepherd's Calendar. So the Shepherd's Calendar was the first major poetic work of Spencer. So it was published in 1579, an emulation of the Virgil's first work, the Eclogues. So Spencer wrote this series of pastorals at the commencement of his career. So however, Spencer's models were rather the Renaissance eclogues of Manchuanus. Next is the Ralph Royster Doister. Ralph Royster Doister. That was written in 1553 by uh, the English, the first by Nicholas Udall. So the Ralph Royster Doister is the first English, first ever English comedy. Ralph Do Ralph Royster Doister. So it's like a tongue twister. I love it. <laughs> okay, next. What are the main literary features during this period? First, Elizabethan literature reflects a great variety of creative genius. So it demonstrates experimentation and innovation in dramatic and poetic forms and techniques. So, uh, the literary features during this time is deeply influenced by Renaissance period. 
so especially by the Renaissance literature of Italy, France, and Spain. So when it comes to the style, to the writing style, is so uh, it exhibits romantic exuberance during this time, and then the writers are all men, not women, from all classes of the society. So during the Renaissance period, the authors are all men. How could it be? How is how is it possible? Maybe some women are uh, some women are also writing, but just secretly that time we don't know. <laughs> Maybe they're just saying that the famous authors that was dated during that time was all men. That's uh, a little discrimination, right? <laughs> So uh, next we also have, so this age is also called the age of inquisitive poetry. So unparallel, unparalleled drama and splendid prose. So, uh, so uh, the Renaissance period is also known as the age of inquisitive poetry, unparall unparalleled drama and splendid prose. So uh, this period marks a ship, a shift from man's fate to his free will. Next, so uh, this period develops English language to a level of stable standard. So its spirit rages from platonic idealism of a delight, delightful romance to the level of gross realism. So the literature of this age shows a quest for the remote, the wonderful, and the beautiful. So it reflects regional romanticism that revived during the beginning of Romantic Age in 1798. So, uh, this period also initiates literary criticism. Next, after the Elizabethan age, we have the Jacobian age from 1603 to 1625. So James I reigned England from 1603 to 1625. Some historians like to call the last five years of this age as a part of another age which called the Puritan age. 1620 to 1660. Since Puritanism became the driving force in the life and literature of England. So what are the important facts that influenced the literature of this period? Here are the following. First, colonial ter territories were expanded. Religious conflict that subsided in the Elib Elizabethan age revived in this period. So Protestants were divided into three sects, first Anglicans, Presbyterians, and Puritans. So uh, who, are the, who are the Anglicans? So the Anglicans are the members of Anglican Church. So they are called as Anglicans. Next, who are the Presbyterians? Presbyterians are the members of the Pres Presbyterian Church. So, while the Puritans, Puritans are called, are the members of English Protestants of 16th and 17th centuries who regarded the formation of the Church of England under Elizabeth as incomplete and sought to simplify and regulate forms of worship. The Scotland was brought under the rule of the King of England. So what are the major writers and uh, their works during this time? So during, during this time we have the famous and loved author, William Shakespeare. So William Shakespeare, who had started writing in the Elizabethan 
period wrote 12 serious plays in this period so during the renaissance period period he 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 had written 12 serious plays during this period so those so out of so i have uh can listed here three out of 12 serious plays that he had wrote that time so uh First, we have the Measure for Measure in 1604, Othello in 1604 as well, and uh, in 1605, he wrote the Macbeth, and so many more. Though Shakespeare wrote the serious plays in the Jacobian age, he is called Elizabethan dramatist and never Jacobian. So the period 1590 to 1616, in which he wrote his plays, is also called Shakespearean age. So that's how popular he is. Well, until now. <laughs> Besides him, there are a few other writers who gained popularity due to their writings, like Christopher Marlowe and Ben Johnson, and many more. So, uh, just a little trivia William Shakespeare coined 1,700 English words and one out of 1,700 words is the word beautiful. So thanks to William Shakespeare, we now we are now <laughs> using the word beautiful. Okay, so what are the main what are the main literary features during this time? So, uh, we have here. Oh, wait. Let me introduce first who is Benjamin Johnson. So, Benjamin Johnson was an English playwright and poet. So, Johnson's artistry exerted a lasting influence upon English poetry and stage comedy. So, this is just a... Um, a little trivia we're going to discuss his relation to the literary features so uh, first we have during this time the elegance and felicity of elizabethan verse disappear and the platonic idealism which had been the main spirit of elizabethan era almost dies out so the renaissance spirit still remains the main influence in this time so drama continues to dominate the literary scene. Classical rules of drama are maintained by Ben Johnson. So that's who he is. And poetry takes a new and starting turn. And decadence of art begins during this period. So English language develops further. And the mosque is innovated. And satiric art begins during this era. Next, after the Jacobian age, we have the Caroline age from 1625 to 1649. So this age is named after Charles I, who reigned over England from 1625 to 1649. So Caroline is derived from Carolus, the Latin version of Charles which also belongs to Puritan age from 1620 to 1660. So the important facts that influence the, the literature of this period are the following. First, there was a civil war between cavaliers and the roundheads. So those who supported the king were called cavaliers. Most of them were lords and their dependents. So uh, roundheads were those who supported Par parliament and most of them were Puritans. So a group of lyri lyric poets associated with the Cavaliers are called Cavaliers Poets. So Richard Lovelace, Sir John Suckling, Robert Herrick, and uh, Thomas Carew were the members of this group. So these poets are also called sons of Ben as they were the admirers and followers of Ben Johnson. 
So, their poems are trivial, gay, witty, and often licentious. Next. So, in uh, 1642, we have English, that the English theater was officially closed in this year, and on the 4th of June 1643, licensing order for printing was passed. So the cavaliers were defeated, the king was caught, and publicly beheaded on the 13th of January in 1649. So his death marked the dissolution of monarchy for the time being. So English colonies were further expanded during this time. So Oliver also Oliver Cromwell emerged as a Puritan leader and came to power in 1649. So who are the major writers and their works in this time? So we have John Donne and George Herbert. So uh, they wrote their me metaphysical poetry in this period. Okay, so uh, next we have we also have John Milton in 1608 to 1674. So uh, he authored the Comus, Comus in 1634. So Comus is a mask in honor of uh, chastity, written, and it was presented on Michael Mas in 1634 before John Egerton, so the first Earl of Bridgewater, and Lolo. Ludlow Castle in celebration of the Earl's new post as Lord President of Wales. So, uh, here are the following literary features in uh, this age. We have first, drama declined significantly, and the uh, literature reflects rival revival of moral and intellectual awakening so elizabethan enthusiasm and national spirit disappear however the literary scenario is overshadowed by gloom and pessimism and critical and intellectual spirit replaces natural outpouring of heart so the renaissance influence however during this time, the Renaissance influence continues. So there are three types of poetry that appeared during this time. First, we have the Puritan, Metaphysical, and uh, the Cavalier poetry. So the Cavalier poets appeared and disappeared. Their straightforward erotic short poems were the motto, Carpe Diem, or... Uh, in English, seize the day, disappear with them. So next, sermons, pamphlets, history, and philosophy are written in prose during this time. Next, we have the Commonwealth period from 1649 to 1660. So this period, like the previous two periods, belonged to the Puritan age. So only in this period, there is no monarch in England. So after the death of Charles I, Oliver Cromwell, the Puritan leader, came to power. So he died in, 15, in 1958 when his son, Richard Cromwell, Cromwell, became the ruler of England. So he ruled England till 1660. So in this period, Puritanism became gradually unpopular. The English people realized that monarchy was essential for them. So, who are the major writers in, the, in their works during the Commonwealth period? First, we have Thomas Hobbes from 1588 to 1679. So, he is a political philosopher. And uh, after that, after the Renaissance period, we have... The Neoclassical period. So the age is called Neoclassical or Pseudo-Classical age. So they imitated the ancient Greek and Roman literary tradition but lacked the originality of the writers that period. So uh, in fact, here are the main literary features during this time. 
We have first the writers of this age imitated the style of the ancient Greek and Roman writers. So much attention is paid to technical perfection rather than the rather than innovation or or natural genius. So human beings are given most importance. That's the good thing in this era. So the literary ideal of the age is art for man's sake and not art for our art's sake. So they are putting an emphasis on the contribution or the appreciation of the man to the art. So it is given much more importance in this time. For general rather than the individual qualities of human beings are given more importance and sophistication in thought and style is emphasized. So the neoclassical age comprises three so shorter age. So it is also comprising three so shorter age ages. Namely the restoration period from 1660 to 1700s, the Augustan age from 1702 to 1745, and the age of sensibility from 1745 to 1785. So the restoration period, this period is called restoration period because in this period with the restoration of the monarchy, the English literary tradition was restored. So in the Commonwealth period, Charles II, the son of Charles I, escaped to France. So after the death of Richard Cromwell, the people of England brought him back and made him king of England on May 29, 1660. So he remained in power, in power till his death in 1685. So when James II, another son of Charles I, ascended the throne after his father died, so he was a Catholic and most of the people who were Protestants wanted to dethrone him. So, uh, James II was a Catholic and uh, the people don't want him. So, they want to dethrone him. So, when in 1688, there was a glorious revolution or a bloodless revolution against him. So, he fled to France because of that. And William III of France, the husband of Mary, the daughter of James II, came to power. So, uh, he replaced James II because people don't don't like him, right? So uh, will William the Third replaced him? So uh, William ruled England till his death in 1702. So he, so William the Third. Okay, 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 okay. William ruled in England till his death in 1702. So what are the important facts that influenced the literature of this period? So first, a general reaction against the Puritan, Puritanical restraints became very strong. And two political parties, the Whig and the Tory, were formed. The Whigs were against the King and the Protestants. The Tories supported the King and the Catholics. So in... In 1690, there was a Jacobite rising, the Catholics of Ireland, and who were led by James II, fought against William, William soldier, soldiers and were defeated. So in 1662, the Royal Society was founded to promote scientific research. Sir Isaac Newton was a new member of it. And in 1695, the press was made free, so everyone was given liberty to express his or her views so because of the printing, because of the press, I mean printing press, I mean, because of the press, everyone was given, was given the freedom or the opportunity to express themselves to the public. So also during the neoclassical period, I mean during this time, the Bill of Rights was adopted in 1689. So it, cur it curtailed the monarch's power and increased parliament's power. So who are the major writers and their works during the time during this time? We have John Milton from 1608 to 1674. John Milton is also the author of 
The Lost Paradise. So he started writing in the previous age, wrote his great epics in this period. So he remained almost unaffected by the looseness of the restoration period. <laughs> it's the paradise lost, rather. So uh, this uh, great epic was written in 1667. So it was... Next, we also have John Bonyan from 1628 to 1688. So, uh, he authored The Pilgrim's Progress in 1678, which is the famous allegory in prose. So, what are the main literary features during this time? So, the imitation of the ancient Greek and Roman writers gave rise to neoclassicism. And a Puritan controls loosen and a wave of fappery and vulgarity sweeps the creative works. So great English epics are written with proper elegance and grandeur during this time. And drama returned with the French licentiousness and gaiety. So it loses Elizabethan seriousness and splendor. And the comedy of manners and heroic tragedy become major dramatic genres. And the translation of great classical texts it starts appearing in this period. And the satirical verse becomes popular in neoclassical period. And the literature of two extremes coexist. Great epics like Paradise Lost and the moral wisdom like The Pilgrim's Progress are finally written. At the same time, sensual comedies like The Country Wife are also written in this age. Next, we have the second age. We have and the second sub-period from the neoclassical period. We have the Augustan age from 1702 to 1745. So this age is called Augustan age because the writers of this period imitated the style and elegance of the writers who wrote in Italy during the reign of the Emperor Augustus from 27 BC to 1480. So this span of time is also called the Age of Pope because Alexander Pope was best known poet of the time. So, so during these years, England was ruled by Queen Anne from 1702 to 1714 and George 15 1714 to 1727 and George II from 1727 to 1760 So the important facts that influence the literature of this periods are the following Scotland was annexed to England next Jacobite rising continued this time and the first cabinet of England was formed and the first English daily newspaper which is called the Daily Current appeared in London in 1702 and the number of coffee houses pubs and clubs was multiplied and people learned the habit of living together and also during this time a number of literary associations is started so uh, one of them is the most famous which is called the Scribblers club so the members of this club were alexander alexander pope john gay john arbonaut jonathan swift and thomas parnell and thomas parnell so the other clubs of this period were kit cut club and the Spectators Club. So, uh, the major writers and their works. So, first we have Samuel Richardson from 1689 to 1761. So, uh, he authored the Pamela or Virtue Rewarded in 1740. And this is the first English novel. So it is entitled Pamela or Virtue Rewarded. 
So remember, the first English novel was written in 1740 and it's called Pamela. What are the main literary features during this time? So during this time, first, the neoclassical spirit continues and the poetry becomes a visual as well as ver a verbal art. So following Horace's theory, with picture poesis, as in painting, so in poetry. So uh, the literary features during this time is first was written in precise manner, formal, and elegant, become the standard style of writing. So Likewise, moderation, realism, and rationalism become the main principles of creative works. And the regular pentameter, couplet, and blank verse are developed to the best possible perfection. And uh, lyric poetry loses dominance in this time, while satirical verse continues. Satirical prose appears, it blends facts, I mean, it, it blends fact and fiction in new forms such as biographies, travelogues, political allegories, and romantic tales. So during this time, novels and journalism begin. And the translation of great classical texts continues. So we or inventiveness and aptness of descriptive images or metaphors become major literary devices in this time. And the literature mirrors political awareness. Lastly, urban culture overpowers literature during this time. And we also have, next we have the age of sensibility, the last one, from 1745 to 1785. So this age is called the age of sensibility because recent sensible views and original genius control the literature of the time. So it is also called the age of Johnson after the name of Dr. Samuel Johnson who dominated this period. So this age is started after Pope's death and ended with the first edition of Lyrical Ballads in 1798. So the important facts that influence the literature of this period are the following. First, industrial revolution. So there was a revolution in agricultural production. British founded the empire in India in 1757 and lost its American colony in 1776. So France also, the French revolution in 1789 to 1799 had a great impact on the literature during this period and the development also the development of commerce and industry the rise of political parties and democracy created conflicts and change in social infrastructure ensued also a literal a literal middle class grew and uh, the range of reading public widened widened So uh, during this time, here are the following major writers and their works. So first, Samuel Richardson from 1689 to 1761. So he had started writing novels in the previous age and wrote the following novels in this age. Namely, the Clarissa Harlow in 1748 and the Sir Charles Grandison in 1754. So here are the following main literary features. So the restoration spirit dies away and each marks a gradual change in poetic taste and techniques and the heroic couplet and blank verse declined and the ballad and lyric, and lyric revived. Also the Pindaric odd appears. So what do you mean by Pindaric? So Pindaric it is a poem in the style of the Greek lyric poet named Pindar. And uh, next, 
intellectual prose writings flourish in this time and the novel t and the novel takes a def definite shape and rises to dominate the literary scene also poetry shifts its focus from intensely social issues to melancholy isolation and reflection features of romanticism and flor and flourishes in the next age come into view so literary criticism finds a solid ground during this period next after the neoclassical period we have the romantic period so uh, the age begun in 1798 with the first definition of wordsworth lyrical ballad and ended with the first reformation act in 1832 so this period is also called revival of romanticism because the romantic ideals of the elizabethan period revived during these years so lyric ballads brought about great change in literature both in subject and style so instead of urban people and grand style rural people and common language were preferred so what are the important facts that influenced the literature during this era so first we have after the french revolution it was accepted that every individual was free and equally important next a small industries disappeared and large industries with huge capital started next machines were wildly introduced during this period next we have the stem engines were used in ships and trains and the industrialization created a lot of slums child labor and <clears throat> and labor problems so the traditional social pattern started changing in this time and the catholic emancipation act was passed and religious equity was ensured use of machines in fields and industries made a large number of women jobless of jobless women many of them became either readers or writers in the romantic period because of those happening and here are the following major writers and their works during the romantic period so first we have jane austen from 1775 to 1817 so she was an anti-romantic novelist in the romantic age so he, she is called so because she's called she's called as an anti-romantic novelist because her stern in attitude against you because of her stern attitude against youthful passion so uh, like like her uh, famous work entitled pride and prejudice in uh, 1797 next we have william hazlitt Hazlitt in 1778 to 1830 so he was a famous critic so the dramatic literature of the age of Elizabeth in 30 1820 rather was written by him what are the main literary features in the romantic period so during the romantic period creative enthusiasm reached almost the level of Elizabethan Elizabethan creative force so it shifts its focus so the the spirit shifts its, its focus from earlier ages faith in reason to faith in senses intuition and imagination oh i love this period <laughs> subjective po poetry subjective poetry replaces the objective poetry of the neoclassical age so if they if the neoclassical age is more subjective romantic period is more subjective okay so uh, the spirit also values common, natural man and rejects artificial ur urban life as subject of poetry. And the language of common men, not the artificial poetic diction of the previous age, becomes the choice of the time. Also the spirit idealizes country life and nature, becomes a means of divine revelation. So romantic poetry reflects rebellious views against oppression, 
restraints and controls. So it celebrates human rights and individualism. Also, romantic literature shows interest in the medieval past. So the supernatural, the mystical, and the mystical, the gothic, and the exotic. So uh, it emphasizes introspection, psychology, melancholy, and sadness. So myth, during this time, myth and symbolism get prominent. Meanwhile, when it comes to the style, in the writing style, the rom- romantic poetry prefer spontaneity, a free experimentation to strict conventional rules of composition, genre, and decorum. So it prefers highly suggest- suggestive language to the neoclassical ideal of clarity and precision. So during this time, lyric poetry dominates and women fiction flourishes. Also, criti- criticism becomes an inseparable part of literature because until now we're more on the romantic poetry (laughs) right next after the romantic period we have the Victorian period so this age is named after Queen Victoria who reigned over England from 1837 to 1901 so though she came to power in 1837. The Victorian period began in 1832. So five years before the accession of Queen Victoria, before the literary features of the New Age became obvious during 1832. So the 12 years from 1848 to 1860 of this age is called the age of the Pre-Raphaelites. Raphaelites because the artists of that time followed the art forms used before the period of Raphael. So while the last, the last two decades, 1880 to 1901 of this period is called the age of aestheticism. So the important facts that influence the literature of these periods are the following. First, Three consecutive reformation acts from 1832 to 1884 gave voting rights to every male and brought about significant changes in social life. So, uh, in 1833, slaves were declared free. The next, Chimney Sweeps Acts in 1840 and Factory Act in 1833, 1833 prohibited child labor. Fourth, we have mechanism of rail, rail wheels and ships was improved, which had led to develop commer- commerce and industry and thus brought material affluence. And th- there was also a significant progress of women, of women during this time. And the agricultural based society was dising- disintegrated as a result of the development of industry. So this had a strong effect on the rural people, especially the rural people. So the theory of evolution and the concept of communism changed the traditional view of life and religion. Also, the Fabian Society was founded in 1883 to avoid violence in class struggle. Famous writers in their, in their works in the Victorian period include Alfred Lord Tennyson um, in 1809 to 1892. So he is known for his melodious language. So, so uh, Alfred wrote the poems in 1833 in, memor- in, memor- in memoriam in 1850 and the modern other poems in 1855. Next also we have Robert Browning from 1812 to 1889. So he is famous for his dramatic monologues, namely the dramatic lyrics in 1842, Me and Woman in 1855, Chamatis Persona Persona in 1864. 
We also have Mark Twain from 1822 to 1888. So his real name is Samuel Longhorn. Longhorn, it's silent E. So his real name is Samuel Longhorn Clemens. So uh, Mark Twain wrote The Adventures of Tom Sawyer in 1876 and The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn in 1885. So here are the following main literary features during the Victorian period. First, Victorian literature shifts from the Romantic Utopianism to Utilitarianism. So from the Romantic common, common mind to middle class men. Middle class. So Victorian attitude to nature also changes in this time. So to the, to the Romantics, it was kind and harmonious. To the Victorians, it's harsh and cruel. During this time, during the Victorian period, predatory and mortality become the controlling principles of creator, creative works. The spirit also encourages compromise and construction. So in the early part of the age literature, chooses art for life's sake and the principle of art asserts deducted didactic purposes so during this period also the mass of writings of this age reflects highly idealized notion of proper beha behavior so also a dualism of reason and emotion materialism and mysticism religion and science or fate and uh, doubt freedom is re and restriction is a very common is very common in the literature of this period so uh, meaning to say during the Victorian period they are not they are not just objective neither only subjective but they 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 meet in the in the middle so in the Victorian period they uh, balance the two uh, the two scales between the reason which is the objective viewpoint and the uh, emotion which pertains to the subjective um, viewpoint of human of humans and its relation to history and how humans create literary pieces or literary works Okay, so during also this time, poets, novelists, atheists of this age emphasizes, emphasize truth, justice, brotherhood, peace, and of course, uh, stability. Also, dramatic monologue and elegy and popular poetic forms of the age, isolation, loss of faith, despair, and emancipation of women are common themes of poems during this time and classical myths are retold in poems so the, the novel becomes the domineering literary form in the victorian period a typical victorian novel has a long and complicated plot an omniscient narrator whose comments on wrong and right serve moral purposes so it has a setting in a known city, a child protagonist, social and humanitarian themes, deeper character analysis, irony in the description and justification of all events in the final chapter. So its common subjects are exploitation of women and children, terrible living, living conditions, industrial civilization, lost identity, and etc. A good number of novels written by women raise the feminist issues. Also during this time, so towards the end of this period, most of these features of the Victorian age gradually disappear. So at the end of this period, almost all the 10 that I've mentioned, all those features gradually disappear so a new movement known as the de decadence started so it brings back the art for art's sake so it emphasizes sens sensationalism egocentricity the bizarre the artificial etc so in literature so swinburne dawson patter 
Morris, and Rossetti are the writers of this group. Next, we are from the last period, from the three main um, periods, we have the modern period. So this period is between 1901 to 1939. So it, 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 this is generally accepted as the modern age of English literature. So Queen Victoria, Victoria's death in 1901 marks the beginning of this new literary era and the beginning of the World War II in 1939 indicates its end. So uh, the modern period comprises two short 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 ages namely the edwardian pe edwardian period from 1901 to 1910 and the georgian period from 1911 to 1936 so first we have the edwardian period so king edward VII reigned over over the england during this time so some historians think the literary trends of this age continued until the outbreak of the World War II, World War I in 1914. So, while opinions about the end of this age vary, because the literary features of this period didn't have sharp closing point in time. However, here are the f important facts that influence the literature of this period. So. During the modern period, or during the Edwardian period, the transitional period between Victorian stability and the impending Holocaust of World War One, that's one of the events that have greatly influenced the literature during that time. Next, in 1902, we have the World War II in South Africa split Britain into anti and pro-war factions and the conflict eventually resulted in power reduction of the parliament parliamentarians. Next, also the, during this time, women's social and political union was founded in Manchester in 1903 and the first congress for Freudian psychology Freudman's Psychology by Sigmund Freud was held in uh, Salzburg in 1908 and the poor law that was passed in uh, 1834 had serious effect on gender condition conditions. Though abortion during this time is illegal, it's the most widely used birth control. So they use during this time they use abortion as a way of controlling birth, controlling the population. It's kind of inhumane, but yeah, that's that's it is what it is. <laughs> so who are the major writers and the and the, the famous works during the modern period? So we have Andrew Cecil Bradley. In 1851 to 1935, who so is better known as A.C. Bradley, a famous critic on uh, Shakespeare. So uh, he wrote the Oxford Lecture, Oxford Lectures on Poetry in 1909. Next, we also have George Bernard Shaw in 1856 to 1950. So he started writing in the previous age. He is a modern dramatist famous for his drama of ideas so uh, he wrote the Caesar and Cleopatra in 1901 so what are the main literary features during this time so the changes in economy brought newfound wealth and new demands literature of the time reflects indulgence in cuisines fashion entertainment and travels so advances in science had profound effect on life and literature. So uh, during this time, the writer's attitude to the voice of the authority is critical, unlike the submissive attitude of the Victorian writers. Okay, so during the modern period, um, the writer's attitude on their literary works are more... Uh, Confident, I guess. You can say that they are more confident. 
and uh, and uh, bold on their approach. And also, the Victorian style is still continuous during this period, and women issues come to light in literary works. Um, women issues come to light in literary works. So the poor finds a stronger voice in literature. And emphasis on moral conduct and predatory decline. And greater awareness of human rights influences writings. Also during this time, the late Victorian decadent belief in art for art's sakes continues. And a sense of detachment alienates the serious artist artists for, um, from the general readers because of this belief. So this resulted in a wide gap between serious works and popular works. So a mass reading public emerges as a consequence of the Education Act in 1870 for compulsory primary education. So consequently, popular fiction was in great demand. So many authors turned away from Victorian's optimism and their self-imposed duty of civilizing the world, the white man's burden, or the white man's burden. So this author satirized Victorian values. Also during this time, the advancement of psychoanalysis by Sigmund Freud has a deep impact on the creative works of this period. So Sigmund Freud had a lot of influence in the literary and the literature during the modern period also the progress in comparative mythology has introduced the intelligentsia to the study of different belief systems so it has affected writers faith in christianity as the only correct faith so uh, next we're done with the Edwardian, Edwardian period, so we, let's proceed to the Georgian period from 1911 to 1936. So this period is named after George V, who reigned over England during this year. So thus, literary features of the modern age continued till 1939, the year in which the World War II broke out. For this reason, it's generally agreed that the modern age ended in 1939. So the important facts that influence the, the literature of this period include the absence of peace and order since unrest and violence engulf life. So uh, it's hard to say, but during the modern period, modern period, this is how life is. Next, imperialism. Nations being engaged in rivalry with other nations. Imperialism or coloniza colonization era. Here we go. <laughs> and next, socialism had great influence in the English life and thought. So class feeling became stronger during this period. So World War I and its aftermath changed the traditional way of life during the modern period. Gosh. And next, the National Guilds League established in 1914 worked out the programs of guild socialism for a gradual change from capitalism to socialist, so, socialism without any violence. Also during this time, press tycoons started mass audience newspapers. And uh, also, the art movements like Dadaism, Surrealism, Imagism, Impressionism, and Expressionism flourished in the modern period. So, before we go on to the next, let's first know what is Dadaism. So, Dadaism is a movement in art and literature. So, based on deliberate irrationality and negation of traditional artistic values while uh, when we say surrealism from the word surrealist it pertains to suggesting beyond reality also what is um 
imagisms. Imagism is a movement that sought clarity of expression through the use of precise images. So, uh, from the root word itself, image. Next, impressionism. So, impressionism is characterized characterized by a concern with the with depicting the visual impression of the moment, especially in shifting effect of light and color. While expressionism, from the root word expression, it highlights it highlights the use of symbols and exaggeration to represent emotions. So, uh, also during the modern period, October Revolution began in Russia in 19, to be specific, in 1917. So, during the modern period, the major writers in their works are First, we have Sigmund Freud in 1856 to 1939. So he was he was a psychologist known for his for his theory of psychoanalysis. So yeah, we all know this that when we say psychoanalysis theory, automatically we're we're gonna think of Sigmund Freud. So uh, Sigmund Freud wrote the interpretation of dreams which have been translated in the year 1913 and also we have William Butler Yeats in 1865 to 1939 so he was a poet dramatist and critic famous for his use of symbolism and mysticism so he wrote the, the resurrection in 1913 so during the modern period here are the following main literary features first the poets who published their poems in four anthologies entitled georgian poetry from 1911 to 1922 are called are called georgian poets georgian poetry is rural in subject matter delicate in manner and traditional in form and technique in the second decade of the 20th century there has been another movement and it is called as it is called Dadaism. So in the twin, in the nineteen twenties, surrealism replaces Dadaism. So there, there have also been experiments with impressionism and expressionism. So the disillusionment of the hope for a better world following the World War One finds expression in the poetry of this period so verse libres or free verse was been introduced so uh, symbols concepts cons allusions and quotations are so frequently used that poetry becomes obscure during this period also this period has been dominated by novels more real realistic and more concerned with social problems so, uh, influenced by psychology, modern novelists focus on the inner problems of the characters along with their social problems instead of chronological narrative technique or the use of stream of consciousness or the interior monologue is ac accepted as a main narrative technique of novels. So, the, tra the drama of the period becomes realistic, which often mirrors social and family problems such contemporary problems that is, that is why in the modern period um, uh, people are more likely to be able to relate with the literary works I mean uh, it's it, usually the literary works during that time is written for uh, the collective Next, after the modern period, we have the post-modern period. So the literary trends of the modern age started changing after 1939, when the World War II devastated the social value values. So after 1939, writers of the age continued the experimentation of the modernist writers, but at the same time, reacted against many ideas implicit in modernist literature. 
So the important facts that influenced the literature of these periods are the following. First, the United Nations was formed. So during this period, the United Nations was finally formed. And the principles of the Enlightenment disappeared. Westerners' beliefs, beliefs is in progress and purity of knowledge ended. Most of the colonists become independent. And the universities became the sources of philosophical and literary theories. So, uh, during also this period, Chuckis, Derrida, Derrida Michael Foucault, and Richard Rorty established. They established the fact that philosophy should no longer seek truth. Rather, they should concentrate on discussing various interpretations of reality. So Christian faith has lost its hold on life and society during the postmodern period because independence is promoted, it is widespread, and everyone is kind of transforming to uh, they are more on the liberal liberal side of liberal mindset. And the uh, next belief in man's goodness has decreased because there's a lot of crimes and uh, social issues widespread and people tend to uh, trust other people less that's why and the globalization and information technology has grown rapidly during this our time in our time so there has been a boom in publishing technologies there is a lot of technologies that was um, uh, created produced to the mass and it, it had a great impact on the publishing matter so also the radio and tv have played important roles in shaping life So who are the major writers and their and their works in the postmodern period? First we have George Orwell in 1903 to 1950. So his real name is Eric Arthur Blair. So uh, he wrote The Animal Farm in 1945. Next we also have Jean Paul Charles Aymard Sartre in uh, 1905 to 1980. So he was a French philosopher playwright, novelist, and political activist. So he was one of the exponents of the philosophy of existentialism and phenomenology. So uh, he wrote The No Exits in the year 1944. So what are the main literary features during this time? So first we have literary voices from across the globe, Canada, New Zealand, India, and the Caribbean, and Africa appear in English so profusely that English literature seem to be literatures in English. Also, angry young men has remained a recurrent theme for years. Also, during this, during our, during this period, social realism dominates creativity for decades. And after 1950, some novelists shift their interest from realistic problems to entertaining subjects. Science fiction and thriller became more popular, and the most uh, the the postmodern dramas deal with the absurdity of human existence and reveal reveal the nothingness or meaninglessness. So, uh, the postmodern dramas deal with the absurdity of human existence and reveal the nothingness or meaninglessness of uh, human efforts. So, also, the literary criticism has become an inseparable part of literary propaganda. And during this period, mass media have become an inseparable part of literary propaganda. And the creative writings cross national boundaries in the way they never did before and also during this period no philosophical theory runs for a long time and 
forms and techniques frequently change throughout the period so there there are a lot of uh, rapid changes when it comes to the forms and uh, writing techniques and also formlessness in art replaces whatever residues of harmony and organic form remained of the previous age Also, during this period, our uh, present time mixed genres, fragments in texts and colleges have come into practice. And also, diaspora or the dispersion of the Jewish diaspora, which is related to the dispersion of the Jewish Jewish people beyond Israel. So, uh, diaspora writings occupy a large chunk of literary production. Also, a huge number of post-colonial texts appear in our time and the awareness of cultural exploitation grows because of education, of science and technology, and so forth and so on. It's so easy to uh, know all of the um, historical events that happened in the long, long time ago in relation to the cultural status of all of us because of technology, because of science and uh, and all and also we have gender issues find stronger voice yes, during our time right, we, we, we have the LGBTQI community and Merupong and uh, yeah we still have a lot of um, during our time, they're, they're, they're now we are now affecting those uh, gender. Unlike before, being a gay is not accepted in the community, in the society. And a lot of gays in the past, or in which have been recorded in the history that was been punished or uh, sentenced to death just because they are gay imagine if 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 our gay friends nowadays lived on that time god you know so sure in this period are in in our present time themes of restlessness and free of forms characterize poetry and elitist language is absent during our time so it's And also a wide of spectrum of social issues find place finally and uh, lastly we have several contradictions prevail throughout the age and also i have seen here the references that i have used in my report and uh that's all for my report thank you for watching and listening i hope you uh, have learned something and that's all for my report. Thank you and God bless.